Welcome back to Cruising America, everyone. Today we're visiting the Arches National Park in southeastern Utah. We're Stephen Kathleen. We're Cruising America in our 35-foot fifth-wheel RV, chasing 70-degree weather year-round. If you'd like to watch our previous videos, please click the Cruising America playlist link in the description below this video. Otherwise, enjoy our current episode starting now. Arches National Park is a geological wonderland and is home to the largest concentration of sandstone arches in the world. That the simple actions of erosion over tens of millions of years could produce what appear to be purposely sculpted formations is endlessly fascinating to behold. Some say God is a stonemason and Utah's Arches National Park is the back room of his workshop. Stone bridges, gossiping monoliths, mountains with windows, city-sized sandstone pipe organs, and petrified sand dunes are just a few of his sculptures. While most visitors are focused on the arches, the park has impressive sandstone monuments throughout, and the drive through the park brings you up close and personal for a look in many areas. What amazes us is many of these structures have perfectly vertical walls for hundreds of feet, in stark contrast to the balance of a landscape that is horizontal instead. Believe it or not, 65 million years ago, this area was a dry seabed spreading from horizon to horizon. If you stood in Devil's Garden then, the striking red rock features we see today would have been buried thousands of feet below you, raw material as yet uncarved. Though it might not look like it, nothing lasts forever. Everything changes. It's just a matter of time. First, geologic forces wrinkled and folded the buried sandstone as if it were a giant rug and someone gathered two edges towards each other making lumps across the middle called anticlines. As the sandstone warped, fractures tore through it, establishing the patterns for rock sculptures of the future. Next, the entire region began to rise, climbing from sea level to thousands of feet in elevation. What goes up must come down, and the forces of erosion carved layer after layer of rock away. Once exposed, deeply buried sandstone layers rebounded and expanded, like a sponge expands after it's squeezed, though not nearly so quickly. This created even more fractures, each one a pathway for water to seep into the rock and further break it down. Today, water shapes this environment more than any other force. Rain erodes the rock and carries sediment down washes and canyons to the Colorado River. Desert varnish appears where water cascades off cliffs. In winter, snowmelt pools and fractures in other cavities, then freezes and expands, breaking off chunks of sandstone. Small recesses develop and grow bigger with each storm. Little by little, this process turns fractured rock layers into fins, and fins into arches. Arches also emerge when potholes near cliff edges grow deeper and deeper until they wear through the cliff wall below them. Over time, the same forces that created these arches will continue to widen them until they collapse, as the wall arch did in 2008. Arches National Park has more than 2,000 natural stone arches, hundreds of soaring pinnacles, towers, massive rock fins, ribs, gargoyles, hoodoos, and giant balanced rocks. This red rock wonderland will amaze you with its formations, refresh you with its trails, and inspire you with its sunsets. 
Humans occupied this region since the last Ice Age 10,000 years ago. Fremont people and ancestral Pueblans lived in the area until about 700 years ago. Spanish missionaries encountered Ute and Paiute tribes in the area when they first came through in 1775, but the first European Americans to attempt settlement in the area were the Mormon Elk Mountain Mission in 1855, who soon abandoned the area. Ranchers, farmers, and prospectors later settled Moab in the neighboring Riverine Valley in the late 1870s. Designation of the area as a national monument was supported by the Park Service from 1926, but was resisted by President Calvin Coolidge's Interior Secretary, Hubert Work. Finally, in April 1929, shortly after his inauguration, President Herbert Hoover signed a presidential proclamation creating Arches National Monument, consisting of two comparatively small, disconnected sections. In late 1938, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed a proclamation that enlarged arches to protect additional scenic features and permit development of facilities to promote tourism. Delicate Arch is the most famous of the arches of the National Park, acting as an iconic image not only for the area, but for Utah in general.
steps. Another famous formation is the double arch and is close to the also unforgettable north and south windows. Petrified dunes are a series of once sand dunes frozen in stone visible from the park road. These are just a small handful of the park's ancient and breathtaking sites, almost all of which are accessible by hiking trails. <laughs> 